I welcome you, my brothers and sisters, to this Eucharistic Assembly. Those of us who have been following events that have been unfolding since the past week in the diocese, the bishop was accused of um, sexual abuse and a lawsuit was filed against him, a civil lawsuit. Well, I am not the judge, and I can't judge. But I know in law, Every accused person is presumed innocent until proven guilty. And secondly, if anyone is accused, he should be given the benefits of the doubt. I think this is congruent with law. But one thing I discovered is that if you are a priest and this kind of allegation is brought against you, you have no benefits. You only have doubts. The person who accuses you has the benefits. That is lopsided justice. If anybody is accused, the person should be given the benefits of the doubt. There is no where, when, where evil becomes good because of the person who commits it. Evil is evil. Good is good, no matter who commits it. And because those who live in glass house shouldn't throw stones, that is why the Catholic Church is where it is today, because there are people in the glass house who had thrown stones. And so, my take is this. Let us give the bishop the benefits of the doubt. Not just the doubt, but the benefits of the doubt. Because that is Adrian to justice. I've known this man, a very good man, and deeply spiritual. And so let me tell you the way I say things. Sometimes I don't say things from just the periphery. The pandemic just disintegrated everybody, took us all away from the church within this period, probably a year plus. And now we are coming back. Another thing is striking, so as to rip us away and get us far and far away from ourselves. Let us not say things from just the periphery. Let us see things from their spiritual point of view. The devil is not happy with us that we are coming back. No. He had always want us to be separate, to be away from the church, and to be very far away from ourselves. You know, what I consider, when I, I see myself as, when all these things are coming up, I see myself as, so I cannot stand with Anthony and, and Vincent. I cannot come close to Gianna and James. I cannot stand up with Mary and Emily. If I see Rowan and Tristan and Audrey and Harrison coming to me, I'll be running away. That is ridiculous. That is absolute nonsense. And that is what the devil wants to do. 
I do not subscribe to that because the church we are is a church of communion and a church of affection, a church of love, brought together at the center of our being and the fabric of our faith by the Eucharist that we celebrate. And every day, the devil wants to tear us apart, brings one thing or the other on the table every day. But it is necessary that we begin to see the spiritual implication and where it is leading us so that we don't buy everything and swallow everything lying who can sink her. Remember, evil is evil no matter who commits it and no one should condone it. But when it is an accusation and we are not sure and the person is not guilty, let us not condemn. Let us not put the person into a, a precarious position that he himself feels abandoned. I think enough for this. The readings of today brings one thing to the table and it, one thing leads to another. The man from Baal Shalisha was just doing his, um, the prerogatives of the law, was just fulfilling the obligations of the law. And this man from Baal Shalisha brought the first fruit to the man of God, Elisha. Well, Elisha asked him to give it to the brotherhood of the prophet. There are about 400, bro 400 brothers who are called the bands of the prophet. And he said, why, how? How can these 20 barley loaves feed these people? And he said one thing, thus says the Lord. What does that mean? Thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord is the authority of God, by authority of God, the authority of his providence, that these people shall be filled and they shall have so many left. And because the Lord said it, it came to pass. It bring, brings us to the gospel where Christ looked at the people, saw the multitude of people who are coming, and he said, oh no, how can we get people, how can we get bread that will feed these people? And then the providence of God made available something. The availability is very important. There was a little kid there who was having five loaves of bread and two fish. But what is it to the multitude? And Jesus spoke the words of thanks and gave them something to eat because the Lord has said it. Thus says the Lord. And Jesus said something. What do we learn from this? First of all, every day we embark on a journey of catering for ourselves to bring bread to the table, to make things available, to make provisions for ourselves. That is what we should do. But we should not forget one thing, that plants grow because somebody is responsible for them, not just what we do. Because what we do can be upturned by just a wave of tornadoes once and it blows everything up. Our plants in the, in, in, in the farm, they grow because somebody is behind it. Flood can just destroy everything at a go. We have our poultry where we produce meat. They are there because thus says the Lord they should be. Otherwise, anything can come and destroy it. And so, thus says the Lord proves the providence of God. And this providence makes available something, no matter how small. That's the reason why 
the little kid was having two fish and five barley loaves. And then one other thing came up. This little kid was willing to share. The willingness to share the providence of God and the available, the available makes, brings us to what we call love. Listen to this. Each time we gather at the table to eat food, we do not just eat food. We share life. That is why Christ made himself at the table of the Eucharist. He gave them his body and blood. In table, we share life. The reason is that the food we eat should give us life. In other words, we eat to live. We do not live to eat. And because we share life, we are brought together in communion. This little guy was willing to share. Otherwise, he would have said, oh no, don't touch it. And God is willing to make it abundant. However, the whole thing is not all about what they ate. The whole thing is not all about the bread. The whole thing is pointing to the uniting factor that will bring the children of God together, the Eucharist. And that is why you are here. And that is why we gather every Sunday. Because at the center is the Eucharist that draws all of us together so that we can share the life of God and at the same time share our lives. And that is where love comes in. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, God does not need the whole world to change the world. God needs only people who are willing to share their lives with the rest of men. The philosophy of this age is that there is so much people on earth that the resources of the earth will not be enough for us. So, if you are pregnant, you can kill the child. It doesn't matter. Oh no. The resources that we waste every day is enough to feed the unborn from now till the next generation. It is not about the, 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 how many we are. It is about the heart that is willing to share. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we gather at the Eucharistic table of the Lord, we give ourselves, we make ourselves available to God. And God is willing to multiply whatever we bring to table because he has said it. Thus says the Lord. His providence is always there. He makes his providence make things available and he actually wants us to be willing to share the little that is available and he will multiply it. The Lord be with you.